It's exciting when you get to the point of moving from a monochromatic image where you've discerned your dramatic value range to the potential of moving into color. And color is exciting. Color is probably one of the reasons that I actually paint in the first place. But color can also be super overwhelming, especially if you use too many colors. So I like to use what I call a limited palette. And a limited palette basically means that you're just using a limited number of colors. And what I often use is just a yellow, a red, and a blue, as you can see here on my little palette. And you might think like, how could that possibly give you enough colors? But actually, just three primary colors like these can result in an incredible array of color. Not only in terms of a classic color wheel, like what you see here, where you have yellow, red, blue for your primaries, you have orange, violet, and green for your secondaries, and then the colors that happen in between those. But it also can, in just three primaries, like you have here, can also result in an incredible array of neutrals. And I'm gonna show you that here, and that all of these colors, all of these neutrals, these neutrals being colors that are basically when you take a primary color like yellow and mix it with its complement, which is across the color wheel. So here you have yellow on the color wheel. If you look directly across, it's to violet. So that's one way of telling which colors are complementary, looking across the color wheel. So if I take yellow and I take violet and I mix them in towards each other, the intermediary colors yellow, yellow, violet, yellow, violet, yellow, violet, violet, I'm going to call it. Those are neutral colors. Orange to blue, again, complementary colors on the color wheel. As you start moving them towards each other, you get these beautiful grays and ochres. Red and green, again, as we start to move them in towards to neutral towards each other, they also start to create incredible neutrals. So as a prelude to starting to work from your color collage. What I think is really essential is to choose three primary colors. In this case, I've chosen cadmium yellow, I've chosen alizarin crimson, and I've chosen ultramarine blue. In the end, you know, it really probably doesn't matter that much which primaries you choose. However, it's nice to have at least the blue or the red be on the darker side. Otherwise, sometimes it's harder to get the darker values you might need. So the next thing that we'll want to try is to create a color wheel based on just using the three colors that you've chosen. And although you may have done this before, you may not have done this with this particular assortment of colors. So if I come in and hydrate my yellow, these are watercolors. I hydrate my yellow. I get a lot of nice yellow paint on my brush. I can come into my yellow zone here and paint it in. And I wanna get enough, you know, it's watercolor, so the more water you add, the more the paper will shine through. I really wanna get a strong yellow because this is a color wheel, I want yellow to be yellow. The next color you put in, I'm gonna recommend you don't go to yellow green or yellow orange because this is still wet. It will bleed into each other. So you might just wanna wash your brush, brush carefully. You always wanna wash your brush in between colors. Maybe hydrate your red. And again, you might be using a palette that has pan colors or you might be using a palette where you squeeze the color out of tubes of paint. Either way, you're still gonna need to if your colors are dry, hydrate them. I'm gonna go in and carefully find my red. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna paint in my red. Again, trying to kind of create an opaque enough layer so that not a ton of the 
paint comes through. Um, not a ton of the paper shows through. Wash off the brush again, and then I can go to my blue, and then I can start to mix my secondary colors. So working with a clean brush, I can bring some yellow down to this part of the palette, and I can then maybe bring a touch of blue in to create a green. And this green, if I want it to be my true green, it doesn't want to be too yellow and it doesn't want to be too blue because we have a yellow green and blue green to do. So I'm gonna say that this is my green. I'm gonna to go to my green here and I'm gonna go ahead and paint it in. So this is a little watery. I might need to put another layer down on here. Just a little bit more pigment make it a little bolder. So if it feels really watery, you can take a little excess water off your brush by putting it onto a paper towel before you put the paint down. And if it's tough for you to navigate the opacity of it, you can let it dry and then work over another layer. So doing a color wheel just using your three primaries starts to collect color data about what these three primaries are gonna do for each other. The second part of this exercise is working with neutrals. So with the neutrals, you can, in this neutral chart, I have yellow, red, and orange, and I have violet, green, and blue. On either side of this sort of panel, we have complements, 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 and we wanna move them in towards each other so that they can create neutrals. So let's give that a try. So I'm gonna to need to, let's just start with my yellow. I'm gonna put a pure yellow into here. And then I'm gonna to want to mix a violet. And I'm gonna mix my violet by bringing my red and blue together. It's, color mixing is just like, so fun and so magical. I feel like that that's a pretty nice, notice I'm sort of leaning back and forth between blue and red. I'm gonna say that's my violet and I'm gonna come ahead and put this violet into the violet box. And then like I showed you in the earlier chart here where I went from yellow to violet and started to create neutrals, I'm gonna to try to make one with mostly yellow and just a little bit of violet. <clears throat> so I can take my palette and I can drag my yellow over here and just put like a nick of violet into it. And you can see that that starts to kill down the yellow just a little bit, makes it not quite as loud. So I've neutralized it a bit with its complement. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in to this and you can see it's just a little bit ochre. It's just a little earthier than what was there before. And then I can also do that, I can take it and bring it into the violet and sort of kill the violet a little bit. And maybe this could come over here and you could see it's a more neutral violet. And so you can go ahead and start to create your neutrals across the complements. And this way you'll really know, based on your palette that you choose, your limited palette you choose, the variety that you can ultimately work with for your painting. So I highly recommend the limited palette. This will be the next step in this process towards ultimately painting from your colorful collage.